Insignia, like its predecessor Vector C, perfectly resists corrosion. Thanks to galvanization and the widespread use of anti-corrosion compounds, the bottom looks great even after five seasons. However, just like on the Vector, the chrome frame of the side glazing can become cloudy in just one winter. And this problem is solved in the only way, by replacing parts. Frustrating owners can be misted headlights, as well as covers flying off from the headwind, which covered the washers. Quite often, the heating filaments of the front seats also fail, and if a similar problem arose during the warranty period, dealers changed the seats without further ado, including the assembly. Transmission. The manual gearbox is no problem, but the automatic is able to present owners with surprises in the form of shocks or even shocks when shifting gears. Moreover, such troubles with the box can occur both during the transition from first to second gear, and, for example, from fourth to fifth. Sometimes the gearbox may freeze during acceleration, in this case, as a rule, the tachometer shows an acceleration of the crankshaft speed, while there is no intelligible increase in the pace. When the ignition is turned off and then turned on, the problem almost always disappears, and most dealers respond to owner complaints in this case only by replacing the firmware and only drivers who persisted sought to replace the automatic transmission under warranty. The owners are also annoyed by the all-wheel drive transmission, which is based on the fourth-generation Haldex clutch. At the slightest overheating, the car becomes front-wheel drive, so kneading dirt on the insignia should be done very carefully. However, the limited slip differential may be to blame for the loss of rear axle performance, due to leakage or a decrease in the level of the working fluid. Engines. In Russia, the most popular was the Insignia, equipped with a 220 horsepower turbo engine, factory index A20 NHT. The reason is obvious, this is the most affordable gasoline modification with an automatic. Unfortunately, this engine turned out to be very capricious, already during the break-in period, some owners were faced with traction failures. Often, after a banal reset, turning off the ignition and restarting the power unit, the problem disappeared for a while. And yet, a similar symptom, as a rule, meant one thing, a replacement turbocharger is coming. If this problem is left unattended, then the engine itself may fail due to oil loss. The warning light is already on at the moment when it is not possible to do with a little blood. In such cases, dealers could nod that the car was filled with low-quality fuel or the owner did not pay due attention to checking the oil level. And yet, in the vast majority of cases, it was necessary to change the turbine and in the most neglected cases, also the cylinder piston group of the engine. So, despite their relative availability in the secondary market and the possibility of combining with all-wheel drive, we definitely do not recommend insignias equipped with this turbo engine. Much less capricious can be recognized as the base 115 horsepower 1.6 liter unit and the 140 horsepower 4 with a volume of 1.8 liters. True, if the latter still somehow copes with its duties, at least if there are two or three passengers on board, then the least powerful engine frankly does not suit the insignia. With such an engine, almost any overtaking is contraindicated for it. In addition, an engine running at its limit not only desperately consumes fuel, up to 15 liters per hundred in the city, but also actively wears out, which gives reason to think about its resource. So, from the point of view of reliability, the most reasonable option seems to be a six-cylinder turbo engine with a capacity of 260 horsepower or its forced modification, 325 horsepower, which powers the sports version of the OPC. It's just that it's not easy to find such cars on the secondary market, and well-groomed specimens are even more so. In addition, extra horses entail severe financial consequences in the form of a maximum transport tax rate. A reasonable alternative to voracious gasoline engines is the 160 horsepower 2.0 CDTI turbo diesel. Among his source, we can mention the loss of traction. The onboard computer in this case writes service vehicle soon. However, this problem, as a rule, disappears if you turn off the engine and start it again after a short time. In addition, at temperatures below minus 25 degrees Celsius, the engine may not start. But the engine provides more than acceptable dynamics and modest fuel consumption compared to gasoline counterparts. Finally, without exception, all engines were affected by another disease, the departure of antifreeze from the cooling system. According to dealers, in the vast majority of cases, there are three reasons. This is a cracking of the expansion tank or a hose supplying fluid to it, or a defect in the housing or thermostat gasket, or a leak in the head gasket. 
In the latter case, antifreeze can get into the engine oil, as indicated by the characteristic whitish emulsion on the filler cap and dipstick. Chassis and steering. The most common reason for the first owners to contact the dealer is knocks in the suspension, especially in winter when crossing obstacles like speed bumps. And most of all complaints about the flex ride suspension with electronically controlled shock absorbers, the suspension can freeze in a sporty, i.e., the most rigid position. If you're lucky, the problem may show up in a broken wire, which is a trifle to replace. Otherwise, there is only one way out, replacing the racks. Buyers of out-of-warranty cars should definitely heed the advice of dealers. In cold weather, you should let the suspension warm up before driving bumps at high speed. This will extend the life of the shock absorbers and save a lot of money, especially if you have that smart flex ride system. The owners also complain about the rattling rear wheel calipers. The dealer can fix the problem either with an appropriate repair kit or a complete replacement. Sometimes, even with a run of 20 to 30,000 kilometers, the steering rack may fail. In this case, you will feel noticeable knocks when you turn the steering wheel. Replacing a note outside the warranty means losing an impressive amount of about 100,000 rubles. So, we found out that the Insignia will really be a bargain either with a 2-liter turbo diesel or a naturally aspirated 140 horsepower 1.8 liter engine. At the same time, it is better to give preference to a more practical hatchback, of which there are quite a few on the secondary market. It is also worth noting that if you are not embarrassed by diesel, then it makes sense to look for the business edition version. Today for 750 to 850,000 rubles you can find a well-groomed copy, in the arsenal of which there will already be adaptive bi-xenon headlights, leather interior and even navigation. 